winner is TD Australia. This week on the game. Our hero meets his hero. That was quite exciting. I'm still shaking from that experience. The Olympic rings. Can you get them right? I think you just bought yourself an Audi. And we'll show you how to earn up to $15,000 a week or get cheap accommodation during the game. Hello and welcome to The Games, your guide to Sydney 2000. I'm Tracy Holmes. And I'm Neil Brooks. Also on today's show, we'll take a look at the Olympic artist whose work is on top of the world. Will you be going to The Games for free? We'll be announcing the winners of free opening and closing ceremony tickets. And don't forget our Olympic Club membership competition where we're giving you the chance to win family Olympic Club memberships valued at over $300. Also later in the program, we'll be announcing the first of our lucky winners. But first, if you and your family are planning to come to Sydney for the Olympics but have been put off by the thought of expensive hotel accommodation or the fact that hotel rooms may be scarce, there is a good alternative. Why not rent out somebody else's house? The residential accommodation program has been set up to connect all Australians, renters and rentees, with levels of housing style and sophistication for all budgets. We thought we've got nothing to lose. If we do get a good tenant, we can then go overseas and have a very good holiday as well. At this stage, we've had inquiries from over 4,000 people looking for accommodation during the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. So let's have a look at three houses which are already listed to rent out during the Olympics. House A, House B and House C. The houses are graded two ways. Firstly, they get a key rating, similar to a hotel star rating. One key for standard, two for moderate, three for above average, and four keys for superior. Then they're assigned a colour, yellow within two kilometres of the nearest Olympic venue, green between two and five k's of the nearest venue, and red over five kilometres away. House A is a one key or standard grade property in the red zone, over five k's away from a major Olympic venue. It's simply furnished and the three bedrooms share one bathroom. But even though it only rates one key, you can see it's not exactly your fibro shack in the middle of nowhere. I go back to the house, of love, house B, Robin's home, is a two key moderate grade property in the green zone between two and five k's from a venue. It has a large informal living area and three double bedrooms sharing one bathroom. The features that we love about our house is the openness of it all, the light, looking straight out into the garden. It's so easy to live in, so easy to entertain in. And we just love it. House C is a three key above average home in the green zone, between two and five k's away from the main Olympic venue. We actually live right on the point on the river, Parramatta River. We're actually probably about 20 minutes walk from the main stadium for the Olympics. Position, it's the Australian lifestyle, you know, you've got a barbecue, you have a swim. It's not an average home and I'm very proud to say it's my home. So. You know, it's just a gorgeous place to live. Oh, I tell you what, I can almost smell those sausages. The swimming pool, not bad. I'm a green zone kind of guy, I think. Is anyone in the green zone going to rent you their house? Uh, well, as long as they haven't got a bar, they could be safe. <laughs> could be safe. <laughs> rent is going to triple. Just add a couple of zeros if Brooks is going <laughs> to rent your place. Some of those houses are pretty special. And later in the program, we'll let you know how much you'll be looking at paying to rent them. But right now, it's time for the Games News with Seven Nightly News' Paul Marshall. The IOC's Coordination Commission arrived in Sydney this week and looked at the athletes' village. Each house will hold 20 athletes, two to a room. The World Wheelchair Basketball Championships are underway at Homebush. 20 of the best men's and women's teams are competing in the World Cup, with the finals beginning on Friday. Thursday at the Crown Entertainment Complex in Melbourne, the Awesome Foursome will launch their inside story, Awesome. And next weekend, we'll know the torch relay route, all the places the Olympic flame is going to visit on its 100-day journey around Australia. We'll have details on towns, dates, and how you can take part. 
That's next week on The Games. I'm Paul Marshall for The Games News. Still to come on The Games, the torpedo scores a direct hit. I just could not believe how tiny she was. And the artist who's forever taking the lift to the 76th floor. It always gives me a surprise every time I come up to just take my breath and go, oh my God, <laughs> I did that, <laughs> you know. Three on the top of there. Three on the correct. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty close. Looks Not right. at all. Not at all. No. going quick. I think you just bought yourself an Audi. Nah. There's three. Colourblind or something. There's three. <laughs> <laughs> well, you turn the board around. Oh, it's not. Nah, nah. Yeah, maybe. I've got a red one here. It's going to have a red colour in it. I'll put this. No, white. Blue. Pear. <laughs> how are you going there, Miles? Not bad. This is a. It's a bit of a. How, it's a bit of a. See how much people know. It's a bit of a Picasso at the moment, isn't it? It's like that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. How are we? Close? Is that right? Yeah, right the first time, yeah. Those guys are fantastic, aren't they? What about the guy colourblind? Still a great effort, made it through. Probably better Thumbs than up. your first effort. Did you know the colours before oh, you went out there? Never in doubt. I hey? don't think so, because you were missing one. Well, uh, just what? the white, the back of the, the backdrop. Front. Maybe I didn't know them. One thing I have noticed, though, those fantastic sculptures on the city skyline. They're not easily missed. The trio of tributes to our Olympians are atop the AMP Tower, and they're the work of Dominique Sutton, a talented Australian artist with a passion for steel. I love making things, I love constructing things, and uh, just the building process is one of the best parts. I was always uh, drawing and interested in art from a really young age, but um, when I went to school, uh, I had this great art teacher who was very uh, forward thinking, I suppose. <laughs> and he taught me how to weld and to cast in bronze and basically encouraged me. Steel has that quality that I'm looking for, and I like the whole uh, struggle with it. Like, I can make something which is um, a really fragile form, like a really delicate form, like a, a gymnast or something like that, out of steel. And the challenge is to make it look um, soft and feminine and stuff, but it also, because of it, the material, it retains this sort of strength. It's quite strange up here because um, it's all it's all in place, ready to go. You know, it's it's done, it's finished. When when it was done in the factory, you know, I was still working on it. We were still welding. It was much more a real thing. But now that it's actually on the tower, it sort of seems a bit distant. But it's great. I love it. I love coming up here and seeing it. It always gives me a surprise every time I come up to just take my breath and go, oh my god. <laughs> I'm still a bit awestruck, really, because it's so, so soon since it's finished. I probably need a couple of months to go away and then come back and have a really good look at it and think, oh, I did that, <laughs> you know. But uh, it was great. I loved it. It was a fabulous experience. Now, I've got something in common with those statues, you know, five tonne each and... I'm... No, you've got something in common with all three <laughs> oh, of them put together. I'm fading away to a block of flats down. <laughs> you trust. are looking good. Now, what, the question is, though, what are they going to do when the games are over with the statues? That's my question. What about on top of the Opera House or on top of the Harbour Bridge? The all the house. steel on top of the steel that look great. You reckon? Yeah. yeah, good one, Chase. Or in your own backyard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you reckon is the most popular male athlete for girls between the age of six and 16? Well, it counts me out straight away, doesn't it? <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> I'll give you the answer. It's the human torpedo, Ian Thorpe. Hi, I'm Kelly. Hi, I'm Catherine. Um, do you eat junk food at all or takeaway or anything like that? I, I don't tend to eat too much junk food, but I occasionally get out and have some but I must say that I always do enjoy a good ice cream. 
What's your favourite music? I like a little bit of grunge and a bit of dance and I mix in a bit of the popular music in there as well. But I must say Impossible Princess by Kylie Minogue is my favourite CD at the moment. When we come back, meeting the princess, it's not so impossible. Welcome back to the games. Ian Thorpe may only have just turned 16, but he already stands a giant. And his modesty, sense of humour and championship qualities have to come from somewhere. As is so often the case with elite sportsmen and women, it's the dedication and support of their families that make a champion. A daily plunge into loneliness. Lap after lap, arm over arm into the self-imposed rhythm. Today, 17 kilometres, you have to want to be here. I generally, I just love doing what I'm doing. A true champion is the sum of many parts. For Ian Thorpe, the beginnings that keep him humble are the same elements that have led him to an early greatness. Consider this. He started swimming with his head out of the water because he was allergic to chlorine, so he used to do all his swimming races with his head out of the water to start off with. An embarrassing beginning for an eight-year-old he followed his big sister into the pool to save himself from the boredom of the sidelines. Bye. At home, young adults now okay, stand where children once did. Christina and Ian still swim, and their bond remains one of typical brother and sister. Finish cooking that. Sister and I, I have respect for her sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, we, we still do get along really well, and I don't think anything's really changed. Sometimes I look at it like that we're not brother and sister because we're at the pool together like teammates and, you know, we train together pretty hard. So, but I mean, I'm still very proud of him and he still is my little brother. Thanks. <laughs> and while he's excelled in the water, there was a time his dad believed the torpedo might have been named for his speed between the wickets rather than down the lane. Ken Thorpe can't swim a stroke but he was a first grade cricketer. His dreams were of a son donning a much baggier version of the green and gold. I was hoping he, he'd be into cricket. We, uh, I got the, the nets and uh, we got the yard cleared so that we could put the nets in and, uh, and, and do it all properly. He wanted me to be a cricketer. He didn't think I could be a cricketer after he saw me play, so that idea went out of the window pretty quickly. The son has now become a first grade role model, part of a world-class partnership and the Thorpes couldn't be prouder of their homegrown swim team. I just think we were fortunate that we were given two children with, yeah. with talent and um, it was picked up. Whatever they achieve in the pool, I'm just as proud of them, what they do, how they conduct themselves at home and what they do in the rest of their lives also. So, you know, we've been blessed with, with the two children that we've been given. Thorpe and Hackett, they go in, they hit it. One of the most important things is, you know, not getting a big head over, you know, your successes and that's um, important for everyone. That is one of the best tactical races I have ever seen. That isn't the end, the be all and end all really, and you, there's bigger and better things that you can strive and for. isn't he excited? One, two, Australia. What a great night. What a great Aussie, great champion, mm. but he's still so natural, so yeah. normal. And so well balanced, Trace. And what a fortnight he's had. It's just been sensational. He's got his L plates, just had a birthday, and this week he had probably the moment of his life the impossible dream came true. Yeah, I'm here to see Kylie mostly of all, but I mean, Natalie's just arrived here, so I'd like to meet her as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Well, that was quite exciting. I'm still shaking from that experience. I mean, I don't think there's anyone at the moment that, you know, I'd prefer to meet. I just met Kylie Minogue, so I was pretty excited with that one. Um, I just could not believe how tiny she was. I mean, standing next to her. It's pretty amazing, but I mean, she's, she's great. I mean, what, what she's done with herself is just amazing and she's a credit, you know, to all Australians. I'm not happy. 
Well, not that happy is about so that. cute, Natalie but she's so tiny well, because about, he's so huge. Natalie and Brulia, superstar. <laughs> and can sing too. Don't go anywhere. We still have plenty more on the games, including the winners of the opening ceremony tickets. And how much will it cost you to rent a house for the Olympics? Welcome back to the games. Now, if you're talking opening and closing ceremony tickets, you're probably thinking big bucks. Well, it's not the case. How would you like some free tickets like these lucky Olympic club members? They're this week's winners of the hottest tickets in the country. Now, we also have another 100 winners and they can find their names on the website. You can win family memberships right here on the games. Every week, we'll be giving away two family memberships to the Olympic club. And we'll be announcing this week's winners and giving you details on how to enter in just a moment. Earlier in the show, we took a look at some fantastic rental accommodation that's available for visitors if they want to stay in a Sydney home during the Games. But the big question is, how much is the luxury of feeling at home going to cost? We looked at House A, a one-key or standard-grade property in the red zone, over five kilometres away from a major Olympic venue. House B, a two-key moderate property in the green zone, between two and five k's from a venue. And House C, a three-key above-average home in the green zone, between two and five k's from the main Olympic venue. The owners of this one-key property will receive $1,820 a week. Not bad. Robin's two-key home will bring in $3,100 a week. And because it's a party house, Nicole and Warren can expect to earn a lot more. If you have the property rented, we're looking at about $8,000 a week. Whereas if it's rented as an entertainment house, which means that they come in and do parties here or whatever, um, it's between twelve dollars to $15,000. And if you're lucky enough to own a four-key property to be used as an entertainer, look out. The owner of this four-key superior property in the red zone will earn over $15,000 for allowing the rich and famous to wear out the floorboards. But everything costs. So what are the costs to the owner? It'll cost you $175 to list your home. You'll pay 15% commission to the agent a $5 administration fee, and don't forget, government taxes of the day. Now, it looks like it could be a pretty cheap way to get the family some reasonable accommodation for the Games. It is. I mean, if you think about it this way, if you took a one-key house, it's going to cost you around $1,800 a week. And with three bedrooms, you could sleep two families, if you throw the kids together, and you'll have all the trimmings of being at home. And if you've got more money to spend, I don't know, go for the Opera House. If you do, it's not a bad idea. Well, last week on the Games, we announced our Olympic Club membership competition, and we've had a fantastic response. And we want you to keep those entries rolling in. All we ask you to do is either design what you think the Olympic torch should look like, or who you think should light the cauldron at the opening ceremony, and why. Then mail your entry to the Games, locked bag 7777, Epping, New South Wales 2121. Or you can email us at the following address, thegames at 7.com.au. This week's finalists were chosen not only because of their artistic merit, but what we believe captured the Olympic spirit. And this week's winners of the Olympic Club family memberships were Lucy Ward of Gawler in South Australia with this great drawing of a flaming boomerang as a torch. Those flaming boomerangs. And Julie Nicholson of Wonturna, Victoria wrote us this great letter. And the letter is, The person selected to light the torch must represent the heart and soul of the Olympics. Besides winning gold, this Australian must have exhibited good sportsmanship, encourage fellow competitors and continue to support and lead future generations following their retirement. Therefore, my choice is, no surprises, Dawn Fraser. Fraser. Well, congratulations to you both. You will now become eligible for the weekly free draw of tickets to the opening and closing ceremonies and all other Olympic events, plus the Olympic Club Pack. But even if you don't win free tickets to the Olympics, don't worry, because here at the Games, we'll be giving you the chance of winning a place in Olympic history. The Olympic torch relay. Is it coming to your town? And your chance to carry the torch. The Great Games Pie Challenge. The AIS versus the mighty MCG. 
and we go down the Olympic fashion time tunnel and discover in some places it's a pretty tight squeeze. That's next week on The Games. That jacket's looking a little bit snug, oh, Neil. I'll tell you what, I think someone put it in the dryer somewhere along sure. the line. Must have, I couldn't have grown that much. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, I'm keen to know exactly where the torch will go. Of course, we know that it will start at Uluru, but its exact route is yet to be announced. We'll have the precise route for you next week, and we'll be giving you the chance to win a place in history. That's right, when we give away spots running with the Olympic torch. That is amazing. And don't forget that if you want any more info on today's show or for the full list of Olympic club ticket winners, you can look us up on our website at thegames.7.com.au or drop us a line at lockbag7777, Epping, New South Wales, 2121. Well, that's all for this week, but we thought we'd leave you with a spectacular video that the Australian Tourism Commission is sending to the world. So sit back, relax and enjoy. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. See you.